Welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman, and, and we're talking about how to get to know God intimately. And now we've been at this for a few months, and, and of course, in order to get to know God intimately, we're going to have to approach, we have to un, have some understanding of the entire Bible. In fact, we live in the New Testament, but it's, it can't, un, there are some things in the New Testament that you will not fully understand unless you have some understanding of some of the things in the Old Covenant. And so, but and so it, it, we uh, so to, in order to know God intimately, then we need to approach. We'd have to deal with all of the major subjects of Christian doctrine to be able to understand God's ways and why He does what He does. Now, for this, uh, for the next few sessions uh, of the Morning Faith Age, starting with today, uh, number three three eight, <laughs> I'm just going to deal with some individual things. Um, uh, the individual things that have come up and give you a little better insight in that. Like, for example, uh, looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. Now, here again, if you don't understand God's ways, his thoughts, and why he does what he does, and, and interpret this scripture in the context of the whole Bible, <laughs> you're going to end up in error. And that's exactly what happened with a lot of people. And I remember those days very well, back in the, well, uh, late 70s and the 80s. People read this verse and immediately took it out of context. Oh, God wants me to be rich. I'm going to be, I'm believing to be a millionaire, you know, and the whole thing focused on dollars. And they missed it. They were in the flesh. And so then, scripturally, we under, need to understand a few things. First of all, you know that through, though he was rich, <laughs> Jesus is God. And as he dwelt in heaven, uh, you talk about rich, streets of gold, I mean, no sin, no devil. No death, no sickness. I mean, that's wealth. Now, of course, he was very rich, but he was not. But in heaven, you're not going to be focusing on the gold or the money. The wealth in the Bible, this is how it's defined. It's not defined by a dollar amount of money, but rather it's a certain state of abundance, more than enough of God's love, power, joy, peace, health, life, favor, all spiritual blessings, and then all earthly blessings to include financial abundance and or material possessions that will enable you to do what God has called or assigned you to do as your part in the body of Christ in order to establish God's everlasting covenant of salvation for mankind, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so it's more than money. Now, Jesus was rich. Hoo -hoo. <laughs> I mean, you don't need money in heaven for all of the love, joy, peace, health, God's love and abundance and uh, a, a, a state of abundance of more than enough in every area of life. But yet for your sakes, for my sake, he became, he, he, um, that through, uh, let's see, yet for your sakes, my sakes, he became poor. He became poor. Well, for Jesus to come into this world and to take on the form of a human being and live in this dark world where Satan's the head of the world system and we have darkness, sin, death, and sickness and disease and poverty, he became one of us. We and, and he became poor. Because we're poor. <laughs> Next to God in heaven, we're poor. And then to live in this ungodly world that we're living in, so he became one of us, and he became poor. He left all of his glory, all of his riches, everything in heaven. He, he, he took on the form of a human being, literally in every respect. And, and, and he left all of his glory, his, all of his uh, heavenly privileges in heaven. And he became a man, a sinless man in every respect. So, and that through his poverty... And that you, through his poverty, might become rich. So, because he was willing to take on the form of a human being, literally in every respect, 
and that he was willing to pay the death penalty for our sins. He was willing to go to hell for you and me. He was willing to spend three days and three nights in hell, suffering the wrath and judgment of God for mankind, so that you and I would not have to go to hell. We could go to heaven instead, so you and I could be free from the power of sin, death, Satan, and hell, and all of that, that we could be free and have complete dominion over all darkness and Satan while we walk on this earth. And then ultimately, upon our physical death, we would then be what? Just like Lazarus, we'd be escorted to heaven with an angel and spend eternity with God. And so he became poor so we could become rich. Now we only, we, we become rich, only really rich when we leave this earth and we enter heaven. So he became poor so that we could spend eternity with him in heaven where there is unlimited abundance of more than enough of everything, uh, uh, power, love, joy, peace, health, favor. Uh, I mean, uh, just no sin, no devil, and no death. That's rich. And he came into this world, took on the form of a human being, litter and respect, paid the penalty for our sins so that so he became poor so that through his poverty, becoming like us, we might become rich and like he was before he left heaven. And now, of course, he's back in heaven. All right. So now that includes financial abundance, of course. But we need to, first of all, understand that in order to really be rich, we have to have God in our life. And so that's where we... We, we, when we acknowledge that we're sinners, that we're, we're, we're helpless without God, we're destined for hell, and then this is where we ask Jesus to come into our heart, according to Revelation 10, 8, 9, and 10. It says, uh, what saith that the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, verse 8, and then verse 9, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that he's raised from the dead, then you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So we're poor without Jesus. But when we ask him to come to our heart to be our Lord and our master, then we're taken from the power of darkness, transferred into the kingdom of the Son of his love, Colossians 1.13. As a born-again, regenerated human spirit, John 3.3. 3, we become a new creation in Christ Jesus, 2 Corinthians 5.17. And uh, we're created in true righteousness and holiness. We become living temples for God to live inside of 2 Corinthians 6, 16 to 18. So we, we're taken from where we are unsaved. Now we get born again, we're saved. And now we've entered into the spiritual kingdom of God where there is true riches. <laughs> where we experience healing, deliverance, wholeness, health, power, joy, and peace. Praise be to God. So, that's 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9. That's got, that involves a whole lot more than money. Now, of course, we need money. You have to in, this, in the system that we live in on this earth. So, God will then bring the riches. We'll bring the money, whatever it takes to fulfill what he's called us to do. Some ministries may need, you know, maybe, maybe you know, 50000 a year to 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 uh, to live and, and and do what God's called them to do. Then there's other ministries, like for example, if you're in a television ministry, or something like that, you may need uh, uh, ten million a year or fifty million a year. So it depends what where God's placed you in the body of Christ and what He's called you to do. And then He will provide all of the finances. Well, first of all, He'll provide all of your. He'll give you the power and the wisdom and everything. And then whatever money you need or material things you need or transportation or buildings or whatever to fulfill what he's called you to do, he'll bring that to you through the new blood covenant. All right. Well, I guess that's enough said there. Um, <laughs> just you be blessed and certainly looking forward to seeing you in the next session. In Jesus' name, amen.